it's time for another episode of Patriots Dynasty Doc Recap as we do a wrap-up show of the Patriots Dynasty documentary. Matt Smith, along with Fred Kirsch, Paul Perillo, Mike Dussault. It's episodes three and four. We've seen the Patriots win their first Super Bowl. But before we get to them winning their first Super Bowl, there was a look back at a coach that took them to their second Super Bowl in franchise history. Fred, were you surprised when you saw Bill Parcell pop up on your screen? A little bit, yeah. Like, oh, wow, they got Bill Parcells, you know? And that goes, you know, they did a lot of work on this thing. Um, it was good to see him. Um, and I think that he got right to the point that they took away the draft to me and there was no way I was coming back to the Patriots. Uh, but, you know, I think from a story, storytelling standpoint, they wanted to go back and show, you know, Kraft's first go around with the team. It didn't end well with a, a great coach. Uh, and it was a learning experience for Kraft. But I, I thought that was really cool to, to see him on camera now, not back then, but now talking about it. And as the years have gone by, we've been led to believe that the border war is over. Right. You know, this is Darth Vader on the phone and everything's hunky dory. It really isn't hunky dory if you listen to what Bill Parcells no, had to say. It, I no, was not coming back as a Patriot once they took the draft away from me. Right. That was it. I was done. Right. It's, no, it's, it's go ahead, Paul. No, yeah. I, I just I, I thought this was kind of oddly placed. I didn't really feel like this had much of a place in the dynasty. Um, understanding that the team itself, the players themselves, a lot of them were Parcells guys. They, they, they had come from those drafts. But, um, you know, the border war being over was – that was after. No, I know this. Yeah, like so. That's true. When when but, when, but, when but, Parcells says I wasn't coming back, that was in '97. I'm saying no, the no, border no, no. war didn't end until long no, but, after but, that. I know, but Parcells said it now. So right. you would think that like, oh, throughout all this time, maybe he, you yeah, know, because like, that's I softened. Did, a bit. I this is what I don't like about it. That's what, <laughs> that's what you think. Parcells thinks he was right. Kraft thinks he was right. No, I, I know, but I don't think it had anything to do with the story, really. But, I just thought it was odd. I know, but since then, I didn't pa like it. Parcells has said, you know, I did some things, and right. he's kind of softened it. But in this documentary, what, talking about that, he made no bones about. It. I like that. I like that he, you know, that was the case back then. Like now, I've softened. I like. Robert Kraft now we're friends blah 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 well, but at that time they've moved on yeah is all yeah. But, but but clearly he's not he's not he's not going back on that no. they took the no, draft no away the, they took the draft away and I like hearing that 24 years later or more 30 years right. later right yeah. you know that was that was cool they took the draft away yeah. from me for with somebody that didn't know what he was doing yeah. I mean, he was very pointed <laughs> well it, it wasn't he was and not he was necessarily right. talking about Robert Kraft. He was talking about other people. Oh no, in the no, no! Building. He, he wasn't talking about, about Robert Kraft. No. He was talking about Bobby, Bobby Greer. Greer and probably Andy Wozniak. Yes. Right, yeah. and yeah. he was right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's funny to me though because this is one of the great debates of like, does Bill Parcells belong in the Patriots Hall of Fame? Is he part of the story well, of the dynasty? Well, as far as this well, documentary is concerned, yes, he is. If they took the draft, well, who drafted all those great guys? Uh, probably him. I think he. Bill Parcells. Oh, okay. All what great guys? They didn't. Maybe they didn't. After they took it from him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there aren't any after he got the draft taken away from him. Okay. Terry Glenn was cat. the only one who did anything. And he, would you get a year out of him? I mean, I mean, the results speak for themselves. So, so for all, all, you know, the Ty Laws, the Teddy Brewskis, those were all so, Parcells. So they took one pick away from him. They took one draft away from him. That's it. They took one. Then pick. he left. They took one. Pick and, <laughs> and then they had three years of okay. terrible drafts. Well, well let's not <laughs> again. That. This is proving my point that it didn't belong in the story. It's useless. <laughs> so, Paul, I'm going to come back to you because I think one of the things that I heard you talk about that was impressive to you in this episode is Teddy Bruschi really kind of defining from a culture standpoint who would best embody the Patriot way and what was that? Yeah, and he, he talked about Drew and his selfless attitude and sort of accepting as a $100 million quarterback that – it's not always going to work out for you, but you have to kind of do what's best for the team. And the, the thing that really stuck out to me is obviously I'm the Drew guy here on this panel, and I am not embarrassed by that. I, I wear that, that proudly. I, even as a Drew guy, had always sort of been under the impression Drew did what he had to do to get by and not upset the apple cart too much. I don't think it was perfect behind the scenes. I think Drew had his problems. But what Brewski is telling you is, considering the circumstances – he was pretty perfect behind the scenes. Like, he could have oh, yeah. been an oh, enormous yeah. disruption, and yes, he was disappointed. Yes, earlier in the, in the, uh, in the, the 
stopped in the, I think one episode one or two. He said, you know, you know, the shine's off the nickel. I'm going to get my job back now. Right. So yes, he always had and that mindset, and he wanted to play in the Super Bowl, but he didn't destroy everything, and he could have. And you know, he did go to Robert Kraft, and he did bitch to Robert Kraft, and Robert Kraft went to Bill. Um, so he did do that, but he could have made it a lot worse. Right. He could have made it a lot worse. And I thought Brewski's comment, right. felt like that was kind of the Patriot way was born. Team that first. Was stunning Team to first. me. Stunning yeah. to me. I mean, you know, and you never point in Drew's direction when you talk about the Patriot way, and I know that that's you know, a term that, that some people like, some people don't, but – for him to point to Drew, I just I found that incredible, and and but but I think he was right, you know. It was and I had never heard that. No, before. neither had I. Right, neither and I. I I will tell you, and they recount this, and Drew does a really good job of recounting it. I remember being outside of Belichick's office. We were told, have a crew outside of Belichick's office. He's going to make a decision. He's bringing Tom and Drew, and he's going to inform of the decision. They both walk out. They both go their separate ways, and Drew was pissed, and he said he was pissed. What's interesting to me is with all the evidence that he had of how Tom had sort of taken over and that they'd won all these games. I came in in the AFC Championship game. I steadied the ship. We're here at the Super Bowl. Why aren't I the starter? And as he said, that was a bitter pill to swallow. Yeah. That was, I mean, even with, even during talk the, about flipping it yeah, over his I, I mean, shoulder. To even during the game after they won that Super Bowl, the, the footage of, of, of Drew and Tom's interaction, and you can just kind of feel – that resignation in Drew of like, yes, I'm happy. I'm happy for the team. You're the man, Tom. Yeah, you're, you're the, the man. man. Right. Twelve. Yeah. You're the man. Twelve. Yeah. That's right. Um, there's another interesting thing that happened in that first Super Bowl that I think a lot of people uh, enjoy here in New England. We saw Bon Jovi talk about it. How we got chills in seeing the Patriots introduced as the team. Paul, uh, <laughs> I got course, different kind of chills. Right. Um, <laughs> But, I, but that whole story of how it happened I found is interesting because, as you guys know, because you were here, they did that periodically. I think they – some people think they did it every single week during the 2001 season. It started when they lost to the Bengals. They definitely did it in Cincinnati. Right? Yeah. And so it became newsworthy because they did it on this stage. Right. And what did you think of that whole moment, Fred? Well, you know, remembering what it was like back then, I, I loved it. Um and I, you have some insight on this. I thought it was a decision that the league was pushing them to go out as individuals, and they made a decision right there that, no, 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 we're not doing that. But you know more than I do. Well, I, I can just tell you what his perspective is. In an interview that I Who's did with hit him? Bill Belichick, yeah. in an interview with him in 2016, and he said the league came to him midweek and said, Bill, we need to know, is it offense or defense that's coming out? We've got a minute 30 scripted in here for you to introduce a team. He goes, we need 15 seconds. We're going out as a team. And the person from the league goes, I don't think you understand. This is the Super Bowl, and you have to designate whether you want your offense or defense to go out. And Bill goes, I don't think you understand. You can do whatever you want. We're going out as a team, and we need 15 seconds. And Bill was the one. Now, was that not communicated right. to Teddy Bruschi? Because Bruschi seemed surprised in the documentary when he goes, I heard a scream in the back. Teddy's got a nice flair for the dramatic, too. I heard a scream come from behind and say, no, we're going out as a team. <laughs> and it just sort of really romanticized the whole thing, yeah. which I thought was yeah. good. But I think they knew they were going out as a team on Wednesday. You think at so? the latest. Yeah. yeah. I, I like. Hey, who knows? Like, Obviously, you know what you know, but maybe Brewski didn't. Maybe they were hearing, oh, the league's going to make us go out as individuals. We, wanna, we don't want to do that. Maybe up until that point, the team wasn't – or at least Bruski wasn't sure that they were going to be able to do it. And then he heard that, and it was like, oh, we're going out of this as a team. You know, I, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I think there's another so entity we need to, to get Teddy Bruski on one of the later wrap-up right. shows yeah. and ask him. Right. I think yeah. there's another entity that was played here, and that's television. Because Fox did the game. That might have been Fox's first Super Bowl, by the way. Um, and they're used to, this is going to be a big show. We're going to introduce these guys individually. And they were saying, no, not as a team. This is boring. It's not as exciting. We want Ray Lewis dancing out into the center. We want Marshall Falk doing all that stuff. You guys remember Gary Gradecki. I think Gary Gradecki, who was on the field in that position, they were scrambling still a little bit. Like the league still at the, at the 11th hour was pushing, no, you guys See, need to be And, and that might have been part of it. Like. Right. The, the the players weren't sure that we were going to be able to still do it. They, right. they were going to force us to do it, but they they stood true, and I I love that. I I mean, I hope they never give that up. I you know I know I we have a new regime here, and it's Gerard, and you know maybe they look at it as an opportunity to redo some things and change the way they get it. I hope they 
they continue to come out as a team. Right. You're watching and listening to Patriots Dynasty Doc Recap as we're talking about the Patriots Dynasty documentary. And as they end Episode 3, Super Bowl 38 is kind of an aftermath. <laughs> they show a field goal, maybe, yeah, right. I think, to win right. it. Oh, yeah, they won two and three. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They, for, for more on the 2003 right. Super Bowl, check out <laughs> Mike Dussault's podcast. <laughs> right, right. I appreciate that. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> they spend a little bit more time on Super Bowl 39, but they use Super Bowl 39 really. as the way. Well, but no. they use that to say that here's where the addiction comes into play. Yeah. And that both Pioli and Brewski, Mike, talk about the narcotic of winning and how you'll do almost anything to win, which... Matt Hamachek, the director, and the Dynasty team do a very good job of a cliffhanger because where are they going for episode four, Mike? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going to Spygate. And uh, the, the, the lean years, the 10 year lean years, I, I was surprised. I mean, the 21 game win streak, you know, it's just, I, I don't know. I think that that point could have been made a little bit better about what kind of made this team special because, especially, you know, coming off this 2003 stuff that, that I did, that we all did, that, you know, celebrating 20 years of that season, you know, you, you remember how special those teams were. And I think that that's just, you know, something that's getting kind of left in the wash because we're trying to tell a bigger story here. You know, we're trying to tell. Like you said, Matt, this was not about who these teams kind of were. This was about the bigger picture of how this team began to view the league and how the league began to view them and what kind of came to and, transpire a couple of years and later. And Fred, what, I mean, so Mike hit on that. If you're a football purist, this might be – that's not Matt Hamachek's style in this. Yeah. Matt Hamachek's style in this is to accentuate the drama. The director. You're ta- yeah. 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 Uh, and – but there was drama that they overlooked. I totally agree, Fred. Yeah. This the, is a big miss to me. They, they missed a lot of drama. They, they missed Harrison Malloy. Harrison Malloy. The lawn snapper cutting his coach. hand. Yeah. Brian Kinchin. Yeah. Do you remember how much yeah. tension there was going into that Super Bowl? Right. Yeah. I mean, this team hates their coach with with Tom Jackson. Tons. You know all that stuff. They they, and I get it. You you only have so much time. You have to make editorial choices, but. That was a big thing. I, I, I couldn't agree more. The lawyer Malloy thing alone could have been 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, th- they, that was yeah. an enormous thing. Tom Brady. So we come off of a couple of episodes where Tom Brady is explaining how he went to quarterback school with the head coach and how instrumental the two were. The next year, he's growing a beard in protest of his coach. They boycotted the coach to the point where Tom Jackson is saying they hate him. Right. Drama. Nothing. Yeah. We got nothing on that, so we can set up Spygate. And I'm not saying they shouldn't have done Spygate. Well, they should have done 12 episodes. Is, well, that's what, what I mean. It's like they won six yeah. titles, there's Maybe. 10 episodes. And Mike's, I'm like, you Mike's bang point, two Super Bowls in 10 minutes. I, I don't even think it has to be just a football purist. They won 21 games in a row. It was a re- it's a record. Right. right. And, yeah. and we don't even hear it. They didn't even mention it. Right. Yeah. So the underbelly of this dynasty comes into full fruition in episode four, and it's Spygate. Well, Fred, how did you think that they handled that? I, I, I thought they did a good job. I mean, if you're looking for, like, stuff that you didn't know before, you're not going to get it. Like, Ernie Adams, they interview him. He's not going to tell you anything. Bill's not going to tell you anything. Um, you know, and I think there's a lot of people that they didn't talk to that we think maybe they should have. Such uh, as? Well, like, they didn't talk to Bears Nigerian, who is right by Bill. They didn't talk to... Any of the video people, you know, they, you know, like there's a lot of people that were involved that they didn't talk to and players. Like, what did you guys think about all this? Brady. Brady. Maybe they asked him and he refused to answer and they didn't put it in. But they made sure they got the Belichick question in to ask him. They didn't have not one comment from Brady on Spygate. Can I give one more guy? Yeah. Eric Mangini. Right. Yeah. Like, how do we not hear from him? Uh, You know, this is another part. I'm sort of, uh, I, I went in with kind of, modest expectations of the whole project and then was really encouraged the way it started and i'm sort of kind of declining here as we get further along and this is one of the things you said it fred did you learn anything nope and i don't think someone you know johnny appleseed in des moines iowa didn't learn anything about Spygate. well no but like this this, the spy gate that they gave us yeah is stuff that absolutely everybody knows but the but well you say that but and we're in it but there's a lot of people who were just becoming NFL fans or very casual fans at the time that I think will find, you know, this episode intriguing. Oh, well, that, like in, but that's a history lesson in, for yeah. someone who didn't experience right, it. For, I'm saying someone who experienced the NFL no, in know. 06 yeah. knows everything that they they tell Oh, absolutely. Me. But I think, you know, again, the craft of this, I think C-R-A-F-T. they did a really, really good job here, you know, starting out with that 
uh, cop from New York who was at the Meadowlands that day. And You like that inclusion. I, I really do. Why? Well, he starts off by talking about how he was undercover with the mob and – you know, for many, many years, and even though you're with all these bad guys, you had to betray them. That was your job. And even then, it made him feel bad. You know, like, I had to get out. Like, I just didn't feel good about myself because of all the betrayal I had to do. Okay, why are we talking about this? Well, now you find out later on when Man the Mangini part of the story comes up. And it's very clear that Ernie Adams and other people in the organization felt that Mangini betrayed them. He, he, he ratted them out. Mm -hmm. um, who said, and somebody used those words. Pioli, I think. Pioli said, yeah. when you leave, don't, 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 make, a me mess. don't make a mess. Don't make don't a mess. Make a mess. It's, family. Was, it's, it's family. It's family when you leave, don't make a mess. And, and right. so that's why I thought tying in that cop story made sense to me. Only if you're going to talk to Mangini. Well, maybe, otherwise it's maybe they tried and maybe me and said no. Drama. Yeah, right. And no, but then you should say something. You like acknowledge it somehow. But that's they weren't doing those editorial notes. That right. wasn't the style. Right. Yeah, you yeah, know, I think it, I think it misses the um, mark. But you know, the other thing that they didn't really touch on that we know is that Mangini went to the Jets, and just that mere action said that he was a traitor. Yep. Like you could go anywhere in the world, but at that time and probably still to this day, but especially. Bill hated the Jets by the way they talked about him on the way out of, of New York. Right. And you want to talk about border war. There was a huge border war with the Patriots and the Jets, even after Parcells left there. And the fact that Mangini left here for any other team would have been okay, but he went to the Jets, and that really pissed Bill off. And then he does this? That was his yeah. first mistake, just right. accepting that job. Right. And then he does this? Right. And as Ernie Adams said, and I, I don't feel I'm, I'm taking all the oxygen out of the room, but as Ernie Adams said, we weren't doing anything that anyone else wasn't doing. We just did it in a different way, in a better way. And I know people were vi videotaping us. Ernie said that. Mike, were you surprised at how, you know, Ernie said, he said, look, I, I, some of these things you have to take to the grave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but seconds later in the documentary, <laughs> he sort of justified the act. Were yeah. you surprised by that? Um, no, because I still felt like kind of Paul did. Like, I don't, you know, like, we're dancing around it. And I still, you know, and as, and again, as a fan who really was, um, I don't know what the word would be, I was devastated when this all happened. Like, I was, you know, a, a sky high Patriots fan at the time. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this season. And, you know, to be, to be totally frank, watching these first four episodes, the first two, it was a reminder of what a joy and a thrill it was early on. And this Spygate episode was a reminder of, some of the crap that you put up with as a fan that you didn't really want to be defending the wall or having to say, everyone, your team's a cheater, your team's a cheater. It sucked. It sucked as a Patriots fan. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, I was online fighting the good fight just like yeah. a lot of people were. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed. I, I, I think what I would always love to hear, and I would love to hear just Ernie Adams, what do you do? What do you do with this footage? Like, you know, I, I would really like to know just what do you do? What, what, what is the point? And I mean, I, I think the thing that I always got to was that, you know, they're trying to make teams know we're doing this. You have to change your signals and you're constantly putting another team on. I never really bought that like in game they were doing it, but I'm still wondering the same exact things I was wondering in 2007 as to why you would do this. And was it widespread in taping or, you know, what was everybody doing? Like what, you know what I mean? Like what was the exact mechanism that all these teams yeah, were employing? But for Ernie, this was probably a hobby. Yeah, you oh, know, it was I know. probably That's, like a game yeah. for him oh, to totally, decipher. Right? Like we're you know, screwing with yeah, other teams. We're making yeah. it hard on them. They know we're doing it. They're kind of doing it too. Like, you know, I just I I don't think anyone can has ever explained. This is like why. bringing in the Native Americans in World War II and deciphering the Japanese codes. You oh, know, the wind talkers. Like, yeah, 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 it's just like that. <laughs> you know, so but for Ernie, it was. Yeah. Like this was fun for him. So oh, I okay. guess I would I, I would sort of summarize my thoughts on these two. You know, like so. Because of the controversies, which was so juicy, we had to gloss over two titles in a 21-game winning streak. Not to mention other drama that Fred talked about. And you give us nothing. Like, okay, so you didn't get Mangini. How about Mike Tannenbaum? How about somebody who can offer me some sort of perspective as to why and how this happened? Yeah. Instead of I'm going to take it to my grave, and I already talked about that in the past. That's the comments you got from the Patriots on the record. I'm taking it to my grave from Ernie Adams. 
and Belichick telling you, I've already talked about it. I, I do think Ernie, just to add one thing, I think Ernie justified it that everybody was doing it. But that's what I they know, said then. I know that it was done to us. I don't remember yeah. him I don't remember him saying, I'll take it to my grave then, but they said everybody else yeah. is doing well, it. Well, I was saying it. <laughs> I, I do think they also, that the, um, the people who put the uh, document together, Fred's talked a couple of times here about the craft, C-R-A-F-T, of putting this together. And I thought some of the audio montages that they did where you heard national voices, sometimes recognizable, sometimes local the voices. The Spygate one was really good. Yep. You're right. Those were really, really well done. It wasn't, you know, whoever saying these guys are cheaters. It was the national media yeah. talking at wit about these guys, they're cheaters. My favorite and, one and was the have, Fox one, they have one, to discredit Matt. what they're doing. Yeah, the, I, fo the Fox one when Bradshaw is like, you know, and they, this calls into question. And <laughs> Jimmy Johnson's at the yeah. end. Well, and, and I, I, I'll never forget, <laughs> at the Jimmy time, so they didn't Bill. use this one, but Scott Pelley at the time anchored the CBS Evening News. And I'll never forget, l listening to him, are the New England, New England Patriots cheaters. Yeah. He led off it's the broadcast yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. Different scandal. Uh, oh, was, <laughs> was it? That, oh, was the other? Uh, that was the play gate. The <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I was going to say, Paul, just to piggyback on what you said, the, um, the Jimmy Johnson thing with, uh, with Terry Bradshaw was a great cut, I thought, was they went back and they showed Bradshaw next to Bill during yes. one of the Super Bowls yes. and kind of yeah. hugging him. And they, I just thought that was a great, great cut, great, you know, just illustration of how things it, – it said exactly what they were trying to say. They went from the darlings, the underdogs, the, you know, the sweethearts of the NFL to now the villains. And uh, yeah, Next just, level nerd. But, uh, next level oh, nerd, man. Mike. Excellent observation. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing that I remember at the time, the big deal that was the Armin Katayan interview. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Armand Katayan is going to sit down and talk with Bill. This is the one time. And I remember at the time thinking, geez, I don't think there was really much there. I thought Katayan did a really good did job of holding job. his feet to the fire. I yeah. think he did, too. His think, questions were really solid. Yeah, he didn't, and he didn't let him go. No. He, you know, he, he wouldn't. You know, he pushed back. I think he did Both a Both things job. can be true. There wasn't much there because Bill, as always, does a great job of just right. giving you stiff the, arm. the right. stiff arm. But. Armin Katayan asked every relevant question you could ask. Right, and I think for Patriot fans that um, were fans during that period or people who were new uh, to the fandom, watching that interview, and they, they ran a considerable amount of it in Episode 4, I think that that's pretty, you know, very, very interesting use of that old footage. I thought that was terrific. Yeah. Um, okay, so what was the reaction to Spygate? You know, the national media has labeled the team as cheaters, and... The documentarians did, in my opinion, an excellent job of introducing the guy that was going to make it all go away, and that was Randy Moss. Fred, what did you think? Is oh, how they I introduced thought that Randy. was one of the most dramatic moments of the first four episodes. First four episodes is when they said, you know, we needed that, you know, guy that would I forget the exact words that open up the field, that playmaker, and then they <laughs> pan over, and it's just Randy Moss looking into the camera. And it's like, you got chills because you know what happened immediately on this team when he came on it. So I looked at it in, in – um, it was it was an interesting – because when, when they're giving you all those collages of all the national people kicking the crap out of Belichick in particular, but the Patriots, to Mike's point of that's where the defending the wall started – you know, Michael Holly, who's, you know, been around forever and very been very close to this team, he says the rules don't apply to them. Yeah. And and I think Bill looked at it and said, Yeah. F you. Right. Wait till you see what we got for you next year. Right. And that's where this panning of Tomas comes from. And yeah. like you get a, a like a peek inside of what must have been going on yeah. in Bill's mind, like, oh, 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 we have to cheat to do this? Wait till you see what we're yeah. going to unleash on you and, this year. And I wrote down when I was watching, they went to war. Right. They went to war. Absolutely. Right. And the recreation of the deal, Mike, where they went back and forth with Moss and Belichick. Yeah. And we've talked earlier that it doesn't look like maybe this was the most important thing on Bill's dance card at the time to do this interview. But I think you saw a little glimpse of he actually enjoyed talking about how that deal went down. I mean, give me more Randy Moss and Bill Belichick. Like, can they do a sitcom together? I mean, any time in history there's been interactions of those two guys, it's hilarious. And, I mean, it's Randy, but I thought that was one of the times that Bill, you know, opened up a little bit, was a little bit of storyteller, Bill. And, I mean, just, you know, for me, again, as a fan, remember Sonny McClain's Santa Monica Bar watching week one against the Jets in that first play that Randy talked about where <laughs> me and Paul are looking at each other doing the ice. I can run. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, it was – you know, it was it was so exciting. And I mean, it's just it, it just brings me back as a fan 
to what a season that was. I mean, everything good, everything bad. It was like you just can't even really explain it. Uh, you know, every week they're hanging 50 points on teams. You know, I remember like them talking about oh, the Bengals can take, you know, like each week you kind of talk yourself into one team. Um, but I, I, I thought they did a good job, you know, just capturing the the F you mentality yeah. of that. I team. loved I loved Moss's comment about family. You know, that was something that I was really I looking to Robert for. Kraft. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was something I was really looking for. And then just in a self, you know, you're talking about, you know, Sonny McLean's it just selfishly. Those were big show days for me. Those yeah. were EEI days with Glenn Ordway and that crew. And I would go in and I'm like, Gee, I don't know, like I don't know why they're running up the score every week. I mean, it seemed like Joe Gibbs, you know, a guy three, three Super Bowls were running up the score every week. And I was tis, t, t, uh, what are you a soccer mom? That's what they used to call me, the soccer right, mom. Right. Like they're not running up the score. You got to stop. Oh. Au contraire, because yeah. <laughs> Teddy Bruschi comes in and tells you flat out we were running up the score. And why? Because BB was pissed. Yeah. That was really insightful. Yeah. I thought, like, it, lest Back anyone to Fred's think war comment. Yeah. Lest anyone think differently as to what they were doing, I thought Bruschi nailed it. Yeah. And the other thing I thought that was pretty poignant was how the team thought about Bill. Bill was getting his ass kicked. Yep. They were kicking the crap out of him, you know, from left coast to west coast, you know. Uh, they were they were killing him, but the team rallied around him, and he, he was ours. Right. He's ours. How do and, we feel and, about playing for Bill Belichick? Right. Yeah. That, was Robert, one, that was one of the, the he's breakdowns. Ours. Right, and Robert Kraft also accentuated that by, you know, Moss talked about family and how he mentioned that to Robert Kraft, and Kraft himself said, we were here, um, we were here to protect Bill's reputation, and we wanted to protect Bill's reputation, and that's why, hey, find me. Fine him. Do what you have to do. Don't suspend him, okay? We're going to rally around him, and we're going to protect him in this Yeah, case. and the team did. Right. <laughs> like, so, like crazy. And then back to the, you know, like the way that season unfolded, and it was early on when they just started laying waste to everybody, right? It was 38-14, 38-14. Yeah, they were averaging 44 points a game. You know, um, yeah, well, like 10 weeks into the right. season, they were averaging 44 points right. a game, not right. like right. three weeks in. You know, and you started saying this team can go undefeated, and it was about halfway through. You know, Andy Hart, who used to work with us, was before that. Paul, uh, we were doing the show in here, and ESPN was on the monitor, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the scroll, and there was a tab for Patriots, Patriots undefeated. undefeated, and, and we were the like, ticker. They wow, were, they got their own tab. Wow, can so you we imagine so the we rest start, of the country. We start talking that? like that, right? And yeah. we're we're talking in those terms, and you're like, well, I wonder what the team, what was the team thinking? They started playing another one bites the dust in the locker room, which was a phenomenal after, after games. More segment. great footage. Oh, yeah, you know, with, with Teddy going over, you know, and we had heard it, Fred, you and I, because the biggest game that year by far was at Indy. You know that that November sweeps kind of game where both teams are always at the top of the league. Brady Manning, Colts are up ten in the fourth quarter. They come back and they get two touchdowns and they win the game, and. They're rocking another one bites the dust on the plane on the way home. Now, Fred and I are thinking at the time, you know, we probably shouldn't talk about right, this. They right, probably right. don't want this out there. <laughs> Little did they know they were doing it in the locker room every every but, week after every game. And the other thing that made me realize is the how grateful I am for Teddy Bruschi because w you know how tough it is to play for Bill. And if you don't have somebody like Teddy who can do that, yeah. you know, despite Bill, no one would ever be point, able to Fred. play here. He, you needed a guy like that to keep it even, to give the other side, to tell the other guys, it's okay. It's okay. We can celebrate. Yeah, Rabel was like that, yeah, but yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, thank God for guys like Rabel and Teddy Bruschi to be on this team. So those are the highlights of Episode 4, and we all know how Episode 4 has oh, to end. God. And that was the low light. <laughs> but even yeah. with the low light, there was a couple of shining examples, I thought. Paul, you and I talked about this. I thought Strahan was unbelievable. I he thought was, he, was he was really, really good. Really good. Yeah. And I He's thought, a great villain. Yeah. yeah, Fred, you talked about Bruschi. I thought Teddy really brought the whole thing full circle. We're witnessing that today where Patrick Mahomes is talking about, you know, geez, are we, are we venturing into Patriots territory here where people are sick of us because we're winning? And Bruschi talked about, you know, they, Strahan made a great point about how they just had to pressure Tom all the time. And Tom was getting the crap kicked out of him. And then <laughs> and Bruschi said. He that laugh at the right, end of it. Right. And then Bruschi talked about he saw the other sideline. And Fred, you know, how impressed with you with how he brought that whole thing. Oh, absolutely. And the way he's, you know, like, we saw that, you know, we've been there. We saw that. Sh and he says, like, oh, shit. 
Yeah. Because he knew. Yeah. That's he, us. He immediately we put know, up. We know what happens when that happens to the other team. He immediately put them. This is 2001. They're us right. in 2001. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. I know what that feels like. And I, I know. I think he said, I know, I know what they feel. Yeah. And the Giants didn't think they were underdogs. No. And the Giants, if you recall, showed up at that Super Bowl all wearing, wearing all black. All black yeah. Because they were coming for a funeral. Going for right. a funeral. And, I, and I, I don't know who the announcer was in the documentary that says it at the time. He said, you know, if the Giants win this game, it's a great story of, you know, the underdog beating Goliath. But if the Patriots win this game and go 19 0, it'll be a holy moment in the NFL. And I couldn't agree more. Had the Patriots won that game, it would have would have been something. To this day, we'd be, you know, no, the greatest team of yeah, all time, right? Yeah. And it got taken away. And I thought Jonathan Kraft. Well, I was just going to yeah, say, go like, ahead. Yeah. No, I think the reaction. I, of course, I would have liked to have heard more from Bill, but I'm not expecting that. Bill was Bill when they asked him about it. Jonathan Kraft, I thought, was very poignant. And gave a different perspective about walking into that locker room and what was that looks like, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did that? How did you take that? And I also want to ask you your thought on because I thought Tom, while not completely revelatory, gave you a little glimpse into what his life was like after that loss. Yeah, I. Th- you know, as a, as a fan, that's what I think you love as hearing Tom Brady has the same feel. Like I mean, I think he said in it. Um, you know, I just watched it the other day. There were guys around waiting to catch the Tyree. You know, like they were feeling the same thing you were. And I think that's what's great about sports as a fan is you you have this kind of sense of shared experience. And so, you know, it doesn't really help. But seeing Tom kind of still have those feelings and that angst about it, um, it, it, it just shows you how you're all kind of in it together. So I, I really like that. And I thought, you know, just I was I was kind of shocked, to be honest, what, what Jonathan said about, you know, guys throwing up. I mean, you know, that intensity. I mean, I've heard other stories from you guys of, you know, things mellowed out afterwards and, and you know, guys kind of made peace with it. But um, it, it's the worst loss but, in NFL history. But, but, they, there's no other way to put it. It was unintentionally great by him because yeah. he like He's trying to think of another way to put it. He already did it like, perfect. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't know really how to describe it. You know, you walk in, you see guys, so- grown men sobbing and guys throwing up. And we all watched it together. We're like, you just, you just described it. it. <laughs> that was it. Another absolutely. thing that I had never heard that, you yeah. know, that was the reaction in the locker room. Because, but you know, Super Bowls are different. You don't generally go in the locker I mean, you can go in the locker room post-Super Bowl, but – Usually they bring a bunch of players out to another area. Yeah. So you don't really go in a post-game locker room for the Super Bowl. I don't think anybody saw that. Right. And, and Jonathan gave you a, a, a window into that. And It was so sickening. I can yeah. imagine that. You could see it on Jonathan's face, yeah. like all these years later, that he was back to that visceral reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And guys were literally throwing up after that game. The yeah. 10-part documentary event, The Dynasty, New England Patriots, is streaming now exclusively on Apple TV+. Plus. The schedule for this show, we will drop a new uh, Patriots Dynasty doc recap every Friday uh, as the series continues on. And we have a giveaway. We have Dynasty books to give away. Email your questions and comments about the documentary to webradio at patriots.com with the subject Dynasty. And if we use your email, we'll send you a book. Great reminiscing, guys. We'll see you on the next episode as we recap the Patriots Dynasty.